Time to touch our bags and drop our sacks on this mailbag edition of Ravens Rundown. Powered by Chat Sports, Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. You got questions, I got answers. We're talking a lot of trade ideas today that you guys have thrown out there. We will react coming up in just a bit. Before we do, folks, we're going to go so close. Almost there. 17,000 subscribers here on the channel. We just need 26. That's it, folks. And you guys know what the boss has said earlier in the week, that if we didn't get there by the end of this week, then we might have to just shut down this whole channel. So don't risk it. We're almost there, folks. Subscribe now for daily Ravens coverage you won't find anywhere else. We're doing these interactive mailbags, breaking news, and more. It's all right here on your Ravens offseason headquarters, Ravens Rundown by Chad Sports. Subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Ravens TV. Mamma Mia, great music. What are the chances we see Matthew Judon return to the Ravens? Great question, Mia. Uh, let's talk Matthew Judon here. It's an interesting situation with him in New England, right? He's 31 years old. He's coming off a season-ending injury last year where he had four sacks in the first four games. And before that, the season prior, he had the best season of his entire career with 15 and a half sacks in 17 games played. He was spectacular and was really just starting to come into his own. Although he's 31 now, you could argue prior to that injury, Matthew Judon was just starting to play the best football of his career. So with that said, then you look at New England's situation here, and this is a team that is starting over, right? They are hitting the reset button and building this this thing from scratch, basically. They have one of, if not the worst rosters in all of football entering 2024. And a guy like Judon, who's right there in the thick of things, in addition to coming off injury at all, he does not fit their timeline, right? And so if you're the New England Patriots, you don't want to have to pay Matthew Judon, and he's coming off injury, and he doesn't fit the timeline of what you're trying to do to get to where you want to go. So if you're the New England Patriots, I say all that to say in a nutshell, you're likely going to trade him. And the Baltimore Ravens, it's interesting. You don't have to give up a ton, but you still have to pay Matthew Judon. And I think it's at least $13 million. I'd be tempted. I would be, I'd be surprised if it happens. I know Bleacher Report this week named the Ravens as a top trade target for Matthew Judon, but I'm not getting my hopes up yet. It'd be a nice addition, but it it feel it would feel like adding a little extra gravy, if you will, to this already good Ravens defense. Should the Ravens trade for Matthew Judon? It's our pinned comment today. Let us know what you think. Type T for trade, P for pass. Weigh in the comment section and let us know. Studio Wizard wants to know what's going on with Hassan Reddick and the Jets. Any chance he ends up here? So that's a weird situation. At the time of this recording, Hassan Reddick traded to the New York Jets, and he was traded for what was under value, right? Just a third-round pick. Kind of surprised everybody. We had talked previously when the Eagles were, uh, you know, shopping him, if you will, about the idea of him coming to the Baltimore Ravens and giving the Ravens another pass rusher. <clears throat> Ultimately, he ends up in New York, and they have not been on the same page at all. Uh, he hasn't had one conversation with his new head coach, Robert Sala, yet. And he's still looking to get paid, and the Jets have not come anywhere close to getting a deal done with him. And for me, it's twofold, right? Yes, Hassan Reddick wants to get paid, and it is very immature in his part not to have communications with the people in New York. I know he wants to get paid and all that, but you just arrived and to kind of push them to the side, that's a bit of a red flag already. Uh, if you're potentially looking to, to trade for this guy, it kind of reminds me of the Antonio Brown situation with the Las Vegas Raiders. Remember how that fell apart so quick that he never even played a down for the Las Vegas Raiders? So that has me a little sus, if you will, as the kids say, uh, in regards to Hassan Reddick's situation. But taking it a step further here, if you're the Baltimore Ravens, you're not going to have to give up even a third-round pick if you were to pull off this trade because Hassan Reddick, with the dysfunction going on, 
And granted, the, the Jets are a dysfunctional organization, so this is not all on Rennick. It goes both ways here. Um, with that said, I would like to have him here. I think that if it's a fifth-round pick, then I can take that chance, if you will. But here's where I'm sitting at here, folks. All right? I don't know, with everything going on with Hassan Reddick, if I want to invest that money in him. I would be willing to trade for him and let the year play out. And then let's see if he fits into how the Ravens do things and the culture and all that, and then potentially have a discussion down the road. But I don't think that's what Hassan Reddick is looking for. He wants to get paid right now. So I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't sound like the right circumstance for the Ravens, but it is a bizarre one in New York, to say the least. Should the Ravens trade for Hassan Reddick? What do you guys think? Two options here. Type Y for yes and for no. You make the call. Let us know what you think. Next up, Luca uh, wants to know, do you see the Seahawks potentially uh, moving on from Tyler Lockett? Uh, no, I don't see the Seahawks trading Tyler Lockett. And I, I know a few things about the Seattle Seahawks. I'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, Tyler Lockett is going into basically what will be his last season with Seattle. Next year, he has a cap hit of about $31 million. There's just no way in hell the Seahawks, or any team for that matter, are going to take on a $31 million cap hit for Tyler Lockett. So this is the last hoorah, if you will. And I think the Seattle Seahawks, remember, they restructured with Tyler Lockett earlier this offseason. So they've made that commitment to Tyler Lockett. I think Lockett would be potentially a great fit to talk about next offseason when he's a free agent and would likely cost a lot less and could be a good fit for this Ravens offense. It'd be a you know, a very good number two or number three receiver, but that's next offseason. Right now, I would be very surprised. I think the Ravens do need some receiver help out there. Uh, I don't know if they're going to make a trade or if they're going to make a free agent signing. I would expect one more receiver to roll in, and the reason why that is is I like Zay Flowers, but I can't trust Rashad Bateman. Nelson Aguilar is just a pure number three or four receiver. He's not – going to take that step up to be competing for that number two spot. And we don't know what Tez Walker's going to offer just yet. He's a rookie. He's a fourth-round pick, very raw. He's got a ways to go. I'd like to see them add one more, but I don't think Tyler Lockett is that guy. And I don't think the Ravens should trade for him with that cap hit that's coming up next year. But I would certainly uh, be open to the possibility when he becomes a free agent after he gets cut by the Seahawks next year. Name a player the Ravens should trade for. We've already talked about several trade candidates. Now it's your turn to weigh in. Shout out in the comments section. Give me a player or two or five. I don't care. Let us know who you think the Ravens should go after. Last question. This comes from Big Truss. Wants to know, how do you feel about the backup quarterback position? Should we go make a trade? So you look at the backup quarterback position for the Baltimore Ravens, and right now, behind Lamar Jackson, you have Josh Johnson, and you also have Devin Leary, who the Ravens picked in the sixth round out of Kentucky. And I'll be honest, I don't feel great about either quarterback. The last time we saw Josh Johnson in a live game action scenario uh, in a meaningful game, not a preseason game, was for the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game a couple of years ago, and he looked bad. And this division is going to be close, folks. The Bengals are good, the Browns are good, the Steelers are good. It might come down to one game in deciding who wins this division and who doesn't. And Lamar Jackson, the hope is that he would play all 17 games. But if he were to miss, do you trust Josh Johnson? Do you trust Devin Leary? I don't trust those guys right now. I don't feel good about the backup quarterback position at the moment. I don't think the Ravens are going to make a move. I think they like what they have. Remember, they moved on from Tyler Huntley without thinking twice. But you look at the options that are out there, and there's a great unknown with these quarterback options out there. Trey Lance, I mean, he's shown nothing. Davis Mills has had his moments. I would still like Mills better than any of the quarterbacks the Ravens have behind Lamar right now. Malik Willis, he isn't anything. And Bailey Zappi, I mean, he's serviceable as a backup. But there's a decent chance that he gets released before the season begins, and you could sign him for next to nothing. So I wouldn't be trading uh, likely for 
three of these guys, maybe Lance, maybe a seventh-round pick or something, but uh, I I would be very surprised if the Ravens do make a move. But if it were up to me, I would be trying to find a better option than what you have now. What's your confidence level in the Ravens' backup QBs uh, of what the Ravens have right now with Devin Leary and with Josh Johnson? Scale it for me in the comments section, 1 through 10. Let us know. My confidence level, not good at all. I'm going to go with about a 4, personally. Let us know what you think. Subscribe now to Ravens Rundown for continuing off-season coverage you won't find anywhere else. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV to subscribe now for free, and we'll see you next time.